I, I've got a tutorial on this uh, for, for Premiere as well. Uh, but this way I'm going to show you guys how to do the same thing in speed grade, kind of that, um, that Sin City uh, color correction effect where you get uh, the reds coming out like lips or a dress or or something like that and and it go and it's black and white and everything else where you're just seeing the color vector of just one item like lips or, or something or, or essentially anything you want to choose <clears throat> so I'm going to do a new speed grade project here I'm just gonna go to the desktop and call it stuff so it's just a quick demonstration um, within speed grade here I'm going to go to my desktop footage stop looking at my personal photos those aren't for you to look at don't look at them my desktop tutorial folder and I'm going to grab one of these images here and add it to my timeline here so this isn't within a project here but this is this is just uh, bringing up one clip and showing it this was a video that was shot in a class and uh, just doing a quick demonstration so there's no real significant lighting going on here uh, it's just the camera turning on under the classroom lighting which is not great but uh, but still this is kind of going to show you how to do the same effect uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our looks um, and we're going to add a secondary color corrector to, to get to achieve the, the look that we're going for here. Uh, within our secondary color correction here, I'm not going to bring up scopes because I'm, I'm not showing how to get accurately uh, accurate uh, uh, legal colors on this or, or, or levels. This is just simply the demonstration of um, secondary color correction here. So I'm going to go to uh, with my I've added a secondary. I'm going to go into my secondary area here. If this isn't showing, sometimes this is kind of hidden under the typical view. Uh, you'll see it like this, and that is kind of hidden down there, and you have to just grab the scroll and pull down, you'll see your little eyedropper there. But I'm going to pull this up so I get a little bit more room. I'm going to go to my little plus here, and we're going to select what color vector we want to uh, change. And I'm going to go up to my image, and I'm going to, um, up here, I'm going to click and drag across the lips right there. There we go. And as we do that, uh, what it's been doing here is it's selecting a certain color hue. I'm going to go down to this gray out and tell it to show white and black. It's going to show, uh, a, in a white mask here, it's going to show the, the part of the image that I'm going to be able to affect. It's showing a range of reds that I've selected there that it is uh, creating a mask out of. Now, if you uh, want to add more to that, I'm going to go to None. I'm going to go to, to and we're going to hit this little uh, plus here, and we're going to Go up and click and drag across the upper lips as well. And I'm going to go back to my mask and show that it has selected more colors. So that's adding more colors there. So I've added the top, the kind of the darker, those, those are kind of darker reds on the top. These are lighter reds. So it's kind of added a whole bunch of uh, reds there. Uh, I'm going to hold down my command key or control key on a PC and scroll down. And it's going to zoom up to the, the lips here because I want to fine tune this mask here. So I just selected that. Now what we've got down here on the bottom, kind of describe the selection. You got this range of colors, your RGB colors right there. Uh, right here, this little line right there, that is your center point. You see the center point right there as well. That is the center point of the main color that it's chosen right there. If you want to add more colors to it, you can grab this and expand it. You can grab this little bar and expand like that. Uh, but we're going to look at our mask. Now that's going to include too many reds. It's starting to get into red skin tones. Uh, so usually this one you kind of kind of leave alone for the most part. Uh, depends really really depends on what you're doing. But when we're getting something just like this obvious red there, it's good to just kind of leave that there and then mess with saturation and lightness. It's going to grab. You'll notice down here that center point has chosen kind of the general color on our lightness and on our saturation. So now it's going to say choose more reds based on lightness. On the bright levels, dark reds, light reds, and saturation kind of uh, reaches into the intensity of the reds and grabs more less, more and less uh, intense uh, red colors uh, just by grabbing this and moving back and forth. Actually, that's moving the entire item right there, so I'm going to grab this range here and change the range. And look at how much, look at the lips as I drag this out and grab more lights and it's gra obviously grabbing more of the lips there and that's what I want to do. Uh, I'm going to grab the light and look what that does and uh, or the saturation and look what that does and then these little arrows right here um, this is the whole range the solid right here is the whole range that's the center point and then it's grabbing also the reds and these darker reds and these lighter red areas and then this is basically a feather it feathers off of the edge into these ranges here and gradually decreases off into those ranges that's how this whole scale works on all three of these ranges here 
Uh, but right there, we've got a good amount of the lips. But you'll also notice as we scroll out, if you if you do Command Home in Speed Grade, by the way, it fits your window, uh, your your um, your canvas into your window space there. Uh, but we've also got some eyes and some stuff in the nose and some little red pot uh, clips over here. So we're going to fix that later. But right now, we're kind of concentrating on the lips. We're going to have to create an actual uh, geographic map to select just the lips and nothing else. Um, which we'll do later on down the line. So right now we're just going to concentrate on this mask right here. Uh, but that, that's good. We've got a decent area right there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to the side here and we're going to grab Blur. And uh, we're going to blur this mask a little bit just to soften the edges and kind of get rid of some of the noise. I'm going to right click. You right click once. You just go click and let go. You're not holding down on the right click. I just right just click the right click like that. And I'm not holding on right click. I just let go of the mouse. And now you move your mouse to the left. Or, or to the right, I mean, and it's uh, and you'll see it sliding. And look at the mask there; it gets softer and softer as we move that over. I'm just going to soften the edges of the mask right, right about there. Denoise, if you got some noise jumping around, you can grab this. Same thing, quick right click, then move. All the functions in Speed Grade work that way. If you right click and then you're, it turns your mouse into a virtual uh, correction wheel there, uh, and that looks pretty good there. So I'm going to go back out, um, and we're going to turn off our mask. And now, notice if we start grading now, uh, down here on this little secondary grade, it's going to affect just the colors in that region. I don't want to affect the colors in that region. I want to affect basically everything outside of that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, go down to my mask that I've created uh, right here. This little item right there changes your mask. Let me show you this. When you click on this, notice it flip-flops your mask. It's an invert. So now it's affecting everything outside the mask instead of everything inside the mask. The reason why I want to do that because now I want to desaturate um, everything outside that mask. So I'm going to go up to my uh, final saturation, right-click and slide over to the left. Hold down Shift. It'll do it quickly and go to zero and everything outside has been desaturated. That's the basic effect right there but like I mentioned we've got some reds in the nose that's shown up and some eyes and some other stuff outside so I just kinda wanna create a, uh, a geographic region here and affect just the region here. So I'm going to go to, I'm gonna go to the beginning of my clip here I'm going to go to mask and um, on this secondary here, I've got the secondary layer, I'm going to choose a little Bezier mask and I'm going to resize this with my widget here and bring down the scale. I'm going to get it just around the lips here. Let's even zoom up more. Make a little more room here. I just want to get right in on the lips there. Rotate that. Pop it in there like that zoom in and then this is a slight feather off <coughs> there let's make it feather off a little bit right before it gets to the nose right there because that's where we're starting to see some of those highlights now I'm going to apply this mask to the inside here I'm going to go down here and say okay I've created that mask now I'm going to apply it to the inside so right now you see it just affecting this region and we're going to treat this region separately out here in a minute uh, so now it's just uh, choosing the color vector from this region, then we're going to go outside, create a mask, and just desaturate everything completely. That's what we're going to do to get rid of those reds in the nose and the other little monitors, and we're just highlighting the lips there. So now I'm going to track this object. I'm going to, I've got that mask around, and I'm going to hit track, and it's going to track that mask there. And if you're using, this is DSLR footage, so it does it pretty quick. If you're using red footage, it takes like two or three times the amount of time to do this. Uh, but the um, but DSLR footage tracks really, really fast, which is nice. Okay, so let's track that, and now it looks like she had something for, bad for lunch that kind of made it uh, leave this white stuff on her face, looks like clown makeup or something that went wrong. Okay, so now we are going to uh, we're going to duplicate the secondary layer. Okay, so now I'm going to affect everything outside that mask. I'm going to desaturate everything outside that mask there. So I'm going to go to my primary here. We're going to just do this with the primary and desaturate everything else. I'm going to go to our, uh, I'm going to do something without a feather right here. I'm going to make kind of this solid, uh, no feathered image here. And it's going to affect everything outside this mask here. I'm going to get this thing so it's shaped properly. And get it so it's all in there, just like right, kind of right around the lips there. It's 
depending on what you're doing, there's some sometimes some easier ways of doing this, but the, this for the shape of the lips is going to be one of the easiest ways of doing this. I'm going to keep that inside the feather and over the lips the entire time, and I'm going to do the same thing to this mask and do a quick track of it. Track that, so it locks the lips there. And that tracked it and stayed on it pretty good. Did a really good job of staying on those lips there and didn't cross over the lips and didn't cross outside of my feathered mask there. So that's good. Now I'm going to uh, tell it to affect everything outside that mask. So I'm going to click on this little outside mask. And right now it's going to affect this primary layer. It's going to affect everything outside that mask and, not, and won't touch anything inside the mask. So now I'm going to go to um, our saturation, final saturation. And we're going to turn that down and everything, there we go, and everything outside is now desaturated outside that mask. So basically we've got two things going here. We've got the primary, we've got this mask that's doing everything outside, and then on the secondary I've got everything inside the mask being affected and it's desaturated everything else but the, the red lips. Now if you want to exaggerate those red lips, we can add one more primary layer on top of this and bring out the reds. And actually, just to make sure that's not adding and boosting any reds anywhere else in the image, you could actually just duplicate this layer here, reverse the mask, and then boost the reds. Uh, which, let's do that. Let's try that out. So I'm going to duplicate my primary. I'm going to put that on top. And we're going to call this one Boost Reds. And now the mask is, we're going to reverse the mask and change it to the inside of the mask there. So right now it looks black and white because that's what that uh, the copied filter did. But I'm going to boost my saturation now. Instead of 100, we're going to boost it up even a little bit more. And now you see the reds uh, really popping out there, maybe even a little bit too much. Kind of exaggerated. Let's bring that down just a little bit so it's just popping just a teeny bit. There we go. Holy crud, that looks good. Okay. So we got the outside of the mask done there. So first primary layer is affecting everything black and white outside. The secondary now is showing a geographic region and a uh, color vector that's affecting the inside and the boost reds. Boom, bring out the highlight the reds just a little bit more. And now we're going to do a couple of little cool things to kind of make this image even better. We're going to go to our, um, let's go down to our little settings here, our presets, our uh, Lumetri looks. And I'm going to find something that kind of looks um, Sin City-ish. And actually, I'm going to do this on a grading layer above because if you click on one of these, it'll replace all your uh, grading layers here. So I'm going to grab a grading layer, drag it on top, select this grading layer right there. I'm going to apply these looks, uh, the look to just the grading layer because if you do, if you uh, click on Lumetri here, down one of these, it'll replace everything in here, replace it with Lumetri. So you got to do this on a separate grading layer. So I'm going to grab, uh, ooh, I like that look right there. So I'm going to double click on that, apply it to this grading layer up there. There's our Lumetri look, and I'm going to do even one more thing. I'm going to grab one more grading layer, put on top of that. Oops. One more grading layer, put it on top of that. And now I'm going to uh, create a little mask here. On this grading layer up here, we're going to create a, a mask. I'm just going to do kind of a vignette. Size that up. Make this larger. Okay, and on that, uh, so I've created that mask there. I'm going to track her so the so the mask kind of follows with her. Track the object. Now it's doing all this color, so it's taking a little bit longer. So I'm going to let that track for a minute. Come back and show you what, what we've created here. Okay, now that that tracking is done, uh, we've got it following her face there. I'm going to go to my primary layer. And I'm going to tone this down a little bit. I'm going to take the midtones, take down the, the gamma. I forgot to apply it to the, I'm going to apply it to the outside. Uh, now we're going to grab the gamma and it will only bring down on this primary layer for the whole thing. It's going to bring down the outside and kind of highlight the face there. Just kind of bring it down a little subtle there. And let's change the mask. Uh, I should have feathered it more. Okay. So now this, now if I feather this, by the way, I, I should have feathered, gotten this to the feather where I feathered where I wanted it before I did the tracking because now if you uh, change the feather wherever it's on the playhead, it's going to just feather on that keyframe right there. So actually I have to clear out my keyframes here. Just 
So I'm going to click on mask and it brings up my keyframes here on this layer. And I'm just going to hit clear all right there, clear all my keyframes. I'm going to go to the beginning, get my feather where I really want it. Oops, about that large and feathered out just so it's kind of this subtle uh, feather off into the edge there. Um, and now I'm going to do the tracking. So there we go. Very cool shot. We've kind of feathered out the edge there. Let me show you everything that we've uh, done here. I've got turn off those top layers and go to my bottom layer and kind of show you all the levels that we've done here of grading so you kind of know what's going on. So here is the, uh, the initial shot. Um, as we click on the first primary, we've cut out uh, a mask here that's, that tracks and shows and follows her lips, that try, and it has desaturated everything outside the mask. Now we've got a secondary that uh, creates a mask on the inside, a feathered mask on the inside, kind of feathers off into that mask on the primary, and uh, follows her lips, and we've done a secondary in that where we've brought out the color of the lips and reversed the mask and told it to desaturate everything outside that. On top of that, we've uh, duplicated our secondary, reversed the, ma or, or, um, reversed the mask and told it to boost the saturation of everything inside the mask. Uh, so then we've uh, boosted the reds and we end up with that. Now uh, now we've done a grading layer on top and we've added a lumetri look. If you think that's too intense you can right click on the opacity for that layer and tone it down just a little bit. And ooh, that actually looks nice right about there. And just brought down the intensity of that preset that they have in there of that uh, bleach bypass. Uh, then Click on the top layer here, and we've created a vignette, kind of highlighting the face and kind of ignoring uh, all the information out here. And so we're just kind of looking at, as if the lips don't bring in enough, then there you go. Now that vignette brings you in and makes it look like we did a little bit of fancy lighting, which we really didn't. So uh, anyway, so that's how you do that kind of Sin City look inside of uh, Adobe SpeedGrade. If you have any questions, uh, send me a message and see if I can answer it. So here's our final look. And let me hold down zero, do it before and after. Very cool. And that's our little demo on speed. Great. So if you have any questions, just uh, please send me a message.